Welp. Chaos ensued yet again in college football. I don't know how. I don't know why. But we got it. And in a day, in a weekend, in which rivalries were so important, you, you had to start with the Lane Kiffin drama. Was Lane going to Auburn? No. He's not. And, you know, it's real funny because Ole Miss, like, that performance against Mississippi State, what was that? Terrible. How do you lose three straight, you know, three straight games to end the season? Mike Leach finally gets the egg. The egg bowl is his. And the Will Rogers and that defense, they put the Rebels down. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable, man. And then Black Friday was weird, you know. You had Tulane, Cincinnati. You know, sure, you know, there was no Ben Bryant for the Bearcats. So they had to try other things, you know, like running the ball a lot more. But then, you know, the defense for the Green Way was just too much. And then you add in Michael Pratt and Ty J. Spears. Recipe for the Green Wave to go finally, for the first time ever, host a home title game. Not, not just their first title appearance. You know, they get to host it at home. <laughs> and in Baylor, Texas, it was important for about a day. We'll see what B. John Robinson does, you know, when it comes to the NFL draft. But he and Roshan Johnson, over 250, combined four touchdowns. And the defense for the Horns, you know, they shined late because they gave up 27. But they shined late in this game to stifle the Bears. Meanwhile, North Carolina, they've had the ACC Coastal locked up for weeks now and yet they lose to a backup in NC State you know having Ben Finley on the field and Drake May yeah he had another good performance but you know all that wasn't enough and Mac Brown and company are just they're just kinda lost cause they just lost two straight games you know kicking a major problem. Two missed kicks failed them in OT. You know, one of them in OT, the other, I assume, in regulation. I did not watch this game, by the way, but yeah. Not what you want. Not at all. And then, you know, Cal gave a good fight to UCLA, but DTR with three touchdowns, Zach Charbonnet with another TD and over 100 yards rushing. I mean, UCLA, nine-win team on the year. Hopefully they get to go somewhere nice. And in Florida State, Florida was a war. Jordan Travis, three touchdowns. Trey Benson, another three touchdowns. And they outdo the Gators. And they finally get that huge win that they needed, the Knowles did, over their rival after so long. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a few years been a few years but they got it they got it nine wins for Florida State I don't think anybody saw that coming and then Saturday oh my goodness the game Ohio State Michigan did you expect the same result two years in a row because I certainly didn't a lot the, the people that voted in the community poll said Ohio State was going to win this game and that did not happen. Ohio State got bullied yet again by Michigan. Like, there were two bad picks by C.J. Stroud. I mean, McCarthy, J.J. McCarthy stepped up. Yeah, sure, some of these throws, you know, it, it wasn't always him. But he stepped up throwing three touchdowns like that. That's not him. He was him today. He was that guy. 
he ran for another. And then Donovan Edwards, a guy we really haven't talked about a lot for some reason, because I mean all the attention was on Corum, but he bullied Ohio State's defense as well. You know, two sixteen on the ground, two touchdowns. Yet again, Ohio State was out of sync. Michigan in sync. And Michigan will get Purdue due to not only Nebraska beating Iowa, you know, but yeah, that was basically the only result Purdue needed was Nebraska beating Iowa. Doesn't make any sense, but it's fine. You know, the Big Ten will shift away from the vision soon, but it's okay. Um, you know, there's going to be some questions about Ohio State as it pertains to this game afterward, but right now you can't really think about that. Um, Ohio State's not out of the playoff picture yet, despite what many people may think. They're not. They can still get in, but we'll talk about that later. South Carolina, Beamer Ball. Beamer Ball did it again. They did it again. Another college football playoff hopeful. I know people weren't very high. I know the committee wasn't very high on Clemson either. But DJ Udalakalele didn't even throw for 100 yards in this game. Yeah, Clemson tried to run the ball. But when you fumble on multiple you know, attempts to return the punt and you let South Carolina punt, you know, strategize on you, you know that that's that that's got to be that's got to be a killer. And Clemson's dreams of a playoff berth are dead in the dust. So Clemson out of it. And although Georgia Tech they made an effort, there was a botched kick this game, and the dogs' offense just. They just got going in the second half. Georgia finishes undefeated. We we kind of we kind of figured this out already. <laughs> Meanwhile, that afternoon slate certainly something. Let me tell you, certainly something. Um, you know, there was only one game that you know really stood out. You know, like Louisville shouldn't have been ranked in the first place, and yet Kentucky showed us why they shouldn't have been because Will Levis threw for two touchdowns and the Wildcats defense forced three turnovers shut the Cardinal down I mean I, I don't I don't get it Who, who's going to be fraudulently ranked next week we'll find out but I, I or rather on Tuesday not, not next week next Sunday is the final rankings by the way Oregon, Oregon State, the Civil War. Comedy. Comedy in the best way for the Ducks. Because how do you turn it over on multiple fourth downs? How do you botch a snap? And how do you let the Beebs only complete six passes on you and lose? How, Oregon, how, how do you let this happen? And Oregon had a 17-point lead in this game. It just they just blew it. Like this is just this is Lane Kiffin against Alabama levels of nonsense. Like why analytics is not the be-all end-all. This is the problem with analytics. Sometimes you just have to go with the points. You can't you can't you can't just you can't just go for it on fourth down all the time. This isn't my this isn't Madden, man. The Beebs just ran it down Oregon's throats. They couldn't stop it. Now Oregon, because of the way the Pac-12, you know, you know, works this year with the top two teams making it. Um, Oregon, you know, would have been out with this loss anyway. Oh. <sighs> You know, Oregon needed something to go their way in the game that just ended, but we'll talk about that game last. And Oregon season, you know, again a comedy. 
you know, after they started out the season so well, they end up just just falling flat on their face. You know, with two of their big games just being massive, massive L's in Oregon State and Washington. How? Meanwhile, the Iron Bowl was, you know, it, it was a thing. It happened. Auburn put up 27, but then, you know, the coaching issues have been a thing for Auburn all week long. Like, now it's like Hugh Freeze is getting thrown out there, which is a terrible option. And Bryce Young just, you know, 400 yards, pretty much four touchdowns, and the Tide are 10-2. Can't do anything. There is no path for the Tide to go to the college football playoff. I do not know where people are getting that from. That needs to stop right now. And meanwhile, TCU, you know, they're going to finish undefeated in the regular season. As, I mean, Kendra Miller and Max Duggan were just on point. Five touchdowns combined. I mean, the Cyclones had three turnovers. One of them being, you know, what, uh, yeah, uh, it was a pick six. It was just a horrible pick six. Three quarterbacks came into this game. It was, it was awful for Iowa State. Their season finally comes to an end. And meanwhile, I, I don't, I don't think I expected Sean Clifford to just throw for four touchdowns like this, but he did against Michigan State, and Michigan State season also ends at 5-7, and seven. so, and the Nittany Lions, they also have 10 wins, again, Big Ten's not very good, so this really doesn't, you know, it's 10, Penn State with 10 wins, clearly the third best team in the, in the Big Ten, but it's Penn State with 10 wins, it gets nothing, like the Big Ten is literally nothing, I'm sorry, aside from the top three teams, it's nothing, it's terrible, and then Utah, Jaquinta Jackson, three touchdowns, over 100 yards rushing. Cam Risey with three touchdowns as well. And finally, Colorado season is over. Maybe they'll get Dion. Because, I mean, the Colorado was just absolutely terrible. This, is, this was terrible. Okay. The evening slate. Okay, okay. Um... Did, did anybody have Texas A&M knocking LSU out like this? I, I, I don't think so. Like, where did this come from? Connor Weichman had two touchdowns. Devon Achne, you're at an A-chain. You know, he had 215 rushing, two TDs. A fumble recovery touchdown was also made by A&M off of a botched snap and I mean LSU just got completely kicked out of the CFP picture again it was a long shot in the first place because LSU's a two loss team you know it, you know it's 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 unfortunately it's not gonna happen you know not yet we will get well, I, I guarantee you we'll get a two loss team probably in the 12 team iteration you know, that's going to be a lot more likely, you know, a lot more two lost teams are going to be in a 12-team iteration. But in four, uh, I don't, there wasn't enough chaos. <sighs> yeah, yeah, LSU, like, this is, this is awful. Awful performance. <laughs> Meanwhile, the last war on I-4 for quite some time was insane. Six turnovers, nearly a thousand yards total again by these two teams. And UCF, they got some help from Tulsa beating Houston, but they were going to be in the AAC title game regardless, you know. And I mean, the Knights had a 28 to nothing lead and then they almost blew it, but Alec Kohler. One-hander, TD, which was weird. Like I'm seeing the play, I saw the play, you know, live, and I'm sitting here like, is that a catch? But it turned out it was. It looked like his foot was out of bounds, but I guess not. 
I guess not. UCF gets Tulane in a rematch. Tennessee, they shut out Vanderbilt. No, no bowling for Vanderbilt, man. Jabari Small, Jalen Wright, and Dylan Sampson were all contributing. Like a punt return touchdown as well in this game. I mean, 300 plus rushing yards. Again, the six touchdowns. Joe Milton didn't even have to do anything. He didn't even have to do nothing. Tennessee is just that good on offense. This. This is the this is a Tennessee team that will finish with ten wins, and I don't think anybody expected that this year from Josh Heupel and company. But they did it. Meanwhile, USC Notre Dame. You know, Drew Pine had 318 yards, three touchdowns, and again, the story was going to be in the trenches. Would Notre Dame get the Caleb Williams? The answer is almost. They almost got to him. Because this man, Caleb Williams, not only is he probably going to win the Heisman, regardless of what happens in the Pac-12 championship, this man used all sorts of magic against the Irish defense. Like, he ran for three touchdowns, you know, in this game, in the most unreal magical ways man like like the this man was escaping pressure like I don't think I've ever seen before you know it's wild you know that kind of hurts USC a little bit depending you know you know but it also hurts Ohio State you know at the same time I mean Austin Jones also gashed the Irish defense for 154 yards rushing himself you know but again the Trojans defense they can only do the thing they know how to do which is cause turnovers that's really the only thing this defense can do and that's what they did a pick and a fumble that's all they needed and the fumble was really Notre Dame's fault because it was one of the weirdest looking mesh plays I think I've ever seen in my entire life but the, but the pick was bad the fumble was just Notre Dame's fault and USC is in position to be in position. Meanwhile, Sunflower Showdown. You know, it's not the jeweled shillelagh, but it's the Sunflower Showdown between Kansas and Kansas State. Important for all the right reasons, as despite, you know, Kansas running for four touchdowns themselves. Um, they they couldn't stop Deuce Bond. The Jayhawks couldn't stop Deuce Bond. He had like 250 yards total, you know, receiving and rushing. Will Howard had three, uh, two touchdowns passing. And I mean, you know, you know, the running game was just too much. Four touchdowns for the K State rushing attack. And guess who's going to Arlington? The Wildcats. So we're going to get a rematch of that K-State TCU game that we saw. You know, we were going to get a rematch regardless because it's the Big 12 round robin. But we, we saw a classic about a month or two ago, you know, between K-State and TCU. And we're going to get another one. And last but not least, the Apple Cup. Washington, Washington State. Uh, really, the winner here determined if Oregon or Utah will go to the Pac-12 title game. If Washington State won, did it be Oregon? If it were to happen to be Washington, then Utah would go. If the Pac-12 kept the visions, Washington would be going. Because although Cam Ward had 300 total yards and three touchdowns, we're talking Michael Penix here, who had 500 plus yards himself. Five more TDs again. Send him to New York too. Send send a bunch of Pac-12 guys to New York. They put on a show. The Huskies put up 700 yards. They sacked Cam Ward six times. 
and yet the end result is that Utah gets to go to Vegas. Completely meaningless game. Patch Web After Dark was technically completely meaningless tonight, and yet I stayed up for the end of this. I, I, I don't know anymore, man. I don't know. Meanwhile, as it stands, we got we got only we got 79 teams that are bowl eligible for 82 spots. There's still some weird things like Buffalo needing a win in a rescheduled game against Akron, New Mexico State having to schedule another FCS opponent. There's another weird you know spot with App State and Army, you know because you know Army is like what. Five and six right now, and App State is six and six, but they have the two FCS wins as well. And then five and seven teams like Rice and UNLV and Auburn, all those teams are in the mix. So, as it stands, we may be short a couple teams, and I, I think that's a testament to that there's too many bowl games. I know I am not of the camp of liking so many bowl games. I prefer bowl games to be on Saturdays. I mean, there's there's still stuff to do during the week, you know, now because of the way things are, you know, for people. You know, people still have work, you know, at least like the, like the last week of the year or two. So, you know, it is, it, it's kind of weird that we have, you know, we're, we're short, again, on bowl eligible spots. You know, there, there's probably too many bowl games, but I mean, the money is just there, and I mean, the, these bowl games are going to become more irrelevant as time goes on, as we get to the 12-team playoff and everything like that, really, it should be eight. And even then, you know, I wouldn't want eight because there's just not eight teams that deserve a national championship or are even the best eight teams that can compete. So really, you know, now, you know, our, our we're going to talk about six of the conference championships next week. We're not going to talk about the CUSA or the MAC or the Mountain West or the Sun Belt. Oh, those four games do not mean anything. We have five teams left in playoff contention. I do not know where, again, I don't know where people got Alabama from because they don't have any good wins on the resume. You know, Texas is not a good win. I'm sorry. Ole Miss is not a good win. I'm sorry. They lost to Tennessee and LSU. Again, Tennessee, you know, any sort of ranking should put Tennessee above Alabama, regardless of what happened to Tennessee. You know, it it really doesn't matter. Again, it does not matter. Alabama's not in. Neither is Tennessee. If you, if you want to play semantics, Alabama shouldn't be in. Tennessee should be in. And LSU, with the three losses, they weren't going to be in because they have three losses. The scenarios come down to this. Georgia, probably in. Michigan, probably in. TCU, probably in. But there is, you know, a contingency with TCU. It's a weird one. And, you know, I want to go over that weirdness real quick. It's, again, it's, it, it's due to where the committee will rank them. They're going to clearly be ranked number three. You know, because you know they're 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 undefeated, but they're number three. It's kind of a weird thing because I mean, again, you know, TCU could lose the Big Twelve championship, but again, I I don't know because again, like it's kind of weird because TCU you know, wouldn't have a, a conference championship or anything like that. You know, I'm not dreaming of the doomsday scenario where Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and USC lose. Because that's the dumbest scenario that would get, you know, a certain Ohio State team in. 
but honestly, TCU is probably in regardless. With you know, you know, a win like they're they're probably in regardless the Big Twelve, although the Big Twelve isn't that great this year. The Big Twelve has enough to where you know TCU I think is in regardless. Michigan is in regardless if they lose to the spoiler makers. And Georgia is in regardless if they lose to LSU. But again, I don't see, I, I really don't see the top two losing. Um, the Big 12 title game is more of a toss-up, though. Um, we'll talk, we'll, we'll, the more simple scenario is that USC is in the CFP if they win the Pac-12 championship against Utah. Again, very simple scenario. USC wins, they are in. USC loses, they're out. Ohio State is in. That's really the only simple scenario that I can see Ohio State getting in. Now, there's a weird complication because, again, TCU and USC have the perception. You know, it's the perception of these two teams that can make things a little weirder. But again, I don't, I don't really see it. Uh, I think, you know, if things hold, we have a Georgia-Michigan-TCU and USC playoff, or we have a Georgia-Michigan-TCU and Ohio State playoff. I don't, I, I, I just don't think TCU is getting left out. I really don't. Um, like, I just don't see it, because they'd only have one loss. You can't really... Yeah, it was in the Big 12 Championship, but I mean, can you really count the Big 12 Championship if you beat everybody in the Big 12 before? Who knows? In any case, there are five teams left in the college football playoff discussion, and we'll see what happens with the rankings on Tuesday. You know, we'll see what happens. Whew. We're in for something. We're in for something crazy. I I bet you, next weekend we're in, we're in for something crazy, aren't we? The fun begins on Friday night with the Pac-12 and the Conference USA Championships, and then Saturday with eight more conference championships for the big dogs, a conference championship from the FCS level, and then eight FCS playoff games. So we got some goodies on tap. Until next week as far as college football goes. I'll see you next week. Take care.